there's some ups, there's some downs, there's some sideways, dude. All right, so first of all, we hear the news, I think, yesterday, or I think it was actually after our podcast on Wednesday, we first heard the news that SGA sprained his MCL. Um, yeah. That's a Heartbreak. bummer on every level. You know, you don't want to see something like that happen, period. But, you know, coming into the season starting, like, we're, we're talking about him missing the beginning of training camp, which we know this team's cautious approach to injuries. Um, there's a good chance he misses all of training camp. And we're talking about getting him back, sure. you know, in November or something like that, just to be you know overly cautious. Now, that's a downer because SGA is the best part about watching the Thunder play right now. But... Yep. At the same time, those young guys are going to get more opportunities. We saw when SGA went down for, I think, 12 games last year, right before the All-Star break, 10 to 12 games. Like, that's when it, um, Giddy really stepped into his own. So I think I'm okay with, like, as long as we get SGA back to 100%, it's not a persistent thing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah. fearful that this is. But I also look at it and I'm like, sprained MCL, man. Like, that's right next to your ACL. Like, that's a concern. Well, it it's about your vertical with that too, you yeah. know, and messing up that is not good. So for me, I look at this and it's like, okay, the season starts in what, four weeks? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. so I look at this like this. All right, uh, typically you would go four weeks on an injury like this. But when Sam Presti addressed it in the news conference, man, he said, you know, he said the best. He's like, on a typical, you know, MCL, four weeks. But this is not a typical MCL. This is a professional athlete that's a top, top condition. Yeah. You know, so this could take a little bit longer. I mean, that's the reality of it, is that yeah. they're going to be monitoring this, you know, week by week by week, you know, and it could be a four week, it could be six week, it could be eight week, it could be a fucking 12 week issue, Mark. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what we're talking about, is that there's no telling and there's no timeline to this. And why is there no timeline to this, Mark? It's because we don't have Chet right now. Yeah, but I mean, they still wouldn't put a timeline anyway. Right? No, and they wouldn't. Just, yeah. But, but you know, Sam addressed it again in the in the um, interview was, you know, out of all the things that's disappointing, it's the fact is that Josh, Shay, and Chet don't have a year to gel. Yeah. The guys don't have a year to gel with Chet. And that's everything, you know? Yeah. And, and understanding that, that that's what this team needs is that they need that everything moment. That's where I keep looking at it. I'm like, okay, so what if it takes Shea, you know, eight, 12 weeks to get better? Worst case scenario. All right. So we're now we're at 12 weeks where we're at Christmas time. Yeah. We're reevaluating at that point anyways, you know? So that's where we're looking at it. He could be out for three games, four games, five games. If it's six weeks, right? So, you know, 10 games, if it's eight or 12 games, if it's eight, you know, eight weeks. So again, I'm not too worried about it. It's, it's a small amount of the season. If we yeah. get him back and he's ready to go playing 30 plus minutes a game, it's not going to matter, you know, but if he's got to come back and take it easy and play 10 minutes at a time because his AC or his MCL is not strong enough, then that's when I have issues. You know, we don't want that. We want Shea ready to come back hundred percent. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Because if he's not a hundred percent, we're putting a lot of, a lot of weight and a lot of rolling of the dice that things Things are okay, and I and I don't like that. That's not what this organization's about. That's true, dude. We're not going to see any of that. That's for damn sure, man. And, and if we miss the playoffs because of it, fuck it. I don't care. This is Shay's career. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I haven't been thinking about playoffs since Chet went down, but people probably <laughs> I, listen. Thirty games. That's our goal. Because every single time we talk, hear Sam Presti talk about, it, he's always talking about better than last year. You know, yeah. we want to see some type of progression. And I and I look at this this last year and what we won, right? And to me, like twenty five games, twenty eight games would be good. You know, yeah. But but thirty games with this team, and then plugging in Chet next year with whoever whatever draft pick we get, that's pretty cool. 
you know, because yeah. 30 doesn't get us to the playoffs or the play-in area, but it gets us close enough to give us a taste of what playoff basketball could be like. And that's meaningful, competitive games, and that's what we're looking for. Yeah, dude, we got we got to hear Presti's press conference, and he told a really cool little story about being at the airport and a fan yelled, thunder up, and he almost started choking up. Yeah. Right? Like He it, loves this he loves this organization. Yeah. Like it's his family. Yeah. You know, like he talked about it. Yeah. He's like, I got married here in Oklahoma City. I met my wife in Texas, but I got married here in Oklahoma. You know, I've had three kids here in Oklahoma. This is home for me. This is where I want to see, you know, an organization. And you see it and you see him talking about it and you see the passion and love. And it's like, shit, bro, this guy, this guy truly loves Oklahoma. And he truly loves being there and being part of an organization in, in the city that's growing with the team and yeah. seeing how they're interlocked and all this other stuff about the city's doing better and the team's doing better and it's bringing more people to the city. And man, I love this man. Like he truly has a passion and you know what? Like, I love it, dude. Yeah. It, it was a, I think hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer press conference. And fortunately for me, I had a, I had a car project to work on. So I'm, I was out there listening, I, you know, got the phone in my pocket and, it was, it was just nice. It was nice to hear him be so optimistic and like also be realistic and then just kind of reiterate these, these things that we've kind of built like our podcast around, yeah. which is just that each year Sam Presti isn't coming in saying, okay, this tank. is a tank year. Yeah. It's you come in, you let the players play, you evaluate it. And then if you get to the point where you're not, you know, playing meaningful games at the end, you lean into, um, your roster building and your, you know, giving talent opportunities, young players opportunities. It happens in every league. It happens at every level. Yep. It's, it even happens in high school. You know what I mean? Like you've got a group of, of seniors and they're out of the playoffs or any chance to play in the States or whatever. And all of a sudden you start noticing that those young guys are getting some run in preparation for the next year. And like, who's calling that tanking? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, it's, just a recognition that the team is hit understanding their ceiling. the pecking order, right? And like, you got to move forward. You yeah. got to look to the next year. You can't pretend like everything is all about one year. And when you think about that incredible experience we had in the bubble, it was because he didn't come in with this preconceived notion of what that team should be or would be. Yeah. And I have a similar sense to this year. It's like we just have to get out there and gel, and then see where we're at. I think mid-January will tell us where we're going. Yep. But we had, last two years, we had pretty good records at the beginning compared to what people expected. I mean, I saw some quote-unquote NBA experts over at The Athletic acting like this would, our teams were going to be one of the, some of the worst teams in NBA history and win less than 10 games. And yeah. both years, it was somewhere in December that we crossed that threshold. And it was sure. like, I mean, I, I love feeding people their words back. Yeah, man. And, and again... I, I, this, this decision on what we're going to do is not going to be made until February. Um, and we've seen that every year it happened at the end of February and the decisions made, you know, like we saw going in to the all-star break, we felt like this team had a, a legit shot at doing something, even though, you know, Shea had just gone out, but getting him back with Josh Giddy. Yeah. You know, we're like, man, this is going to be great. We could, these guys together are going to be all right. We'll be able to put in, you know, we thought at that point, 30 wins. One game. One game. That's all we got. Yeah. And that's all right. And that's just the way shit goes. And w that's the reevaluation re at that moment. It was like, okay, now what? Okay, what are we going to do? Because we've got to make this decision for our team, what's going to be best for our team now. And it's not... Again, if, if we made this decision in the beginning of the year, then we win 18 games. Like yeah. the you know ESPN predicts that we won like nine games one year or whatever Sam Presti said. So that's the thing. If we listen to those predictions, then that's how the team ends out. But the team doesn't ever listen to the predictions, and we always go way above the predictions. And that's the thing that we're talking about is because when push comes to shove is we have a starting point. And this year it's 16 or 17 games. <laughs> That's yeah. where everybody thinks that we're going to win. Yeah. So that's our starting point. 
And anything above that is way better. And what we think is we think by the halfway point that we could be close to that 16, 17, 18 point mark that they have predicted. Right. And that's what, you know, that's again, meaningful, meaningful basketball. It's not, we're not out there playing, um, you know, um, against, oh, we're not out there playing what they call playoff minutes, right? But it's it's quality basketball against playoff teams because we have a very tough schedule this year. So it's going to be like playoff minutes out there. It's going to be an intensity because when you play a team like us, that's all about intensity and getting up the court and playing great defense and all this other stuff, you have to bring your A game. And if you don't, you get your ass whooped. Yeah. That's what sure. I love about the Thunder yeah. is that – Every team in the NFL, um, NFL, every team in the NBA now totally understands if you go and you bring your B game to get play against the Thunder, you're fucked. Yeah. Because they know that these guys are all out there ready to play hard. It doesn't matter who's on the floor. This team is full of NBA talent now, unlike it was a few years ago when we we're playing hard and aggressive and we, we still we trying to figure out everything. A few glimpses at the end of the last year when we were only playing like seven guys in games. Yep. We had healthy guys on the bench. Mm -hmm. Like those guys got much better than they were when we were playing like 10 deep the previous year. And yeah. they were competing at a high level. And then we were bringing guys up that like <clears throat> were just two way guys. I don't remember all their names. Yeah. Like, but we were still exactly. competing. And, and they're all over the league now, man. Yeah. You know, uh, one place for um, Magic that we saw yeah, yeah. Sam Simpson, Captain Samson. Hook. Yeah, Captain Hook. Hook yeah, shot Captain from the Hook. point yeah, guard. Yeah. All right. So again, we we have an opportunity here this year to do some great things, and I, you know, I'm I'm going to sit back and I'm going to really enjoy watching the progression this year. Yeah, you know, we're we're, we're without Shay, it's going to look a little shady in the beginning. Shady, Shay. <laughs> uh, but push comes to shove, it doesn't really fucking matter. Because it's not the beginning of the season that our whole season is going to be judged by. For sure, bro. Dude, so. and when we get after it, which I think we will, you know, we're going to take it to, to some teams that don't expect it, but they already know that we're competitive. We're going to have all these other Thunder podcasters going back and hiding all their predictions and their receipts just like... Clearing that shit out. <laughs> Holy smokes. Holy smokes. That's it. That's it, guys. That's our show. That's Thank it. you for joining us. Um, we got so much love for all of you guys. Whether you're joining us for the Thunder Podcast, The Last Storm, for the Yankee Death Star, <clears throat> or if you're joining us for all hour and a half of this podcast with the no offense podcast thank you we're pumped up about you we love you love you we love you so much we keep watching this this thing like get momentum and all i can say is what the living fuck dude i love it bro i love it we love it, you guys for making us feel special thank you guys i don't know what else to say other than i love you i love you with my whole heart we will see you soon. <laughs>